Welcome to the Earth Science Classroom. Today in Earth's Interior 5 video, we're going to the depth, pressure, and temperature relationships. Now, in as we discussed with, with both the geotherm and, and temperature, so temperature equals the geotherm, and pressure being lithostatic. Okay. The relationship is that as uh, with depth, increasing you get an increase in temperature at different rates or speeds or velocities and then you get also an increase in pressure which is more exponential so the temperature is in Celsius, and the pressure usually is in, um, in different variations, new meters, but I used uh, PSI as the unit. So what we're looking at now is pretty much the upper mantle, which again includes the lithosphere, the asthenosphere, And this also includes part of the crust, of the crust, which we know is in two types. We have oceanic, we have continental. And the oceanic is generally a thinner crust between you know five to seven kilometers in thickness, and the continental is a lot thicker, which would be between uh, fifteen to twenty-five kilometers but can get as much as 100 under some of the larger mountain ranges. So the, as you go deeper down through the upper mantle, you get these, these relationships between the temperature and the pressure and how that affects the rock. So again, it's all about how it affects the rock in terms of the, the, um, the phase changes, the density, how it might affect the composition, especially in the lower mantle or the mesosphere where the pressures are so great it actually changes the structure of the, the rocks and the, and the molecules and the minerals. So we need to appreciate these changes. Now, in terms of the upper mantle, we're looking at the majority of the, the upper mantle being a rigid, solid layers. So, and then we have a small amount, maybe around 1%, which would be in the form of melt or magma, which means, which means that there is an area or depth or location where the temperature is over the pressure which would allow that phase change to occur. So you might see these diagrams in a lot of textbooks or online uh, websites. And I want to like, explain uh, what you're looking at, basically. So we have this box, basically, with two main axes. Um, this uh, x axis uh, right here is temperature, so increasing from left to right, uh, so, so low temperature down here to a high temperature up here. And the same thing with pressure and depth on the y-axis. So low pressure and depth, so looking towards the surface with very low pressure and, and, and not deep really, to um, increase depths with obviously exponentially increased pressure. So what we have here is the relationship between temperature and depth and pressure and what it's showing us is the um, geothermal gradient. So we have a geothermal gradient. With the red line and the black line, okay? Now the red line is going to be continental. There's a continental plate or crust, and then the black line is going to be oceanic. So we're looking really at uh, the top, really the top lithospheric area 
of the Earth's interior and a certain depth where these will occur. Now, we also have partial melting. So, partial melting would be some of the rock would be solid and some would be melt, which is magma or liquid. So you could have partial uh, melting of the rock, but not all of it. Now it takes a lot of, of temperature and less pressure to create a fully melt uh, piece of rock, you know, rock turned to melt, and it goes in stages. And as you see here with the partial melt in, in the green area, you'll see that there's different variations and percentages. So this is all percent. So this first green line right here, okay, would be the limit where, you know, anything left of this green line right here, of this green line, would be all solid rock, okay? So as you see, our two, um, con our two geothermal gradients, both the continental and oceanic, both fall within this area of solid rock. And the point in which it turns to partial melt, where some of the rock could actually melt, is called solidus. That's where it starts to melt. So that's, that's based on a certain temperature and depth and obviously pressure. So the, the temperature would go past this solidus line, this green line, and enter into the partial melting area or phase of the diagram where you'd see an increase in percentage of melting of that piece of rock, so from 0 to 100. And then it would reach this other stage of melting where it's called liquidus, where the rock has undergone enough temperature changes to turn it from a solid piece of rock into 100% uh, melt. And therefore, anything further to the right on this diagram would be a pure liquid. So, as you can see by the diagram, it takes a lot. Now, these two geothermal gradients, we have the one for uh, continental, right here, and the one for oceanic, right here. Oceanic is the one that it will be closer to that, that partial melting area, whereby, but as you see, both of these geothermal gradients mean, or, or they exist where the rock is solid, naturally. Now what happens is there has to be something added or changed in order to move these two geothermal gradient lines further towards the solidus line where partial melting could occur. Now these um, additions or changes we discussed further in a different video, but you want to see just the appreciation of this diagram and how the, the rocks are naturally going to be, be solid and how it's very hard to create magma in this situation. And that's why there's such a small percentage of magma under the ground um, that is feeding the hot spots, the, 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 the mid-ocean ridges, and obviously the volcanoes around the world.